Hi guys, so it's been a while since I've done a video because I've just been so busy. There's just so much going on the whole time and um, I just wanted to bring you in. I'd done a couple of short videos the other day and I decided I was going to try and uh, try and do a proper video now that I've kind of got a little bit of time. And uh, the shorts were just to kind of give you an idea of what I'm working on at the moment. So, as you can see, here is uh, I had serious issues with the wear on these idlers. They were really, really, really bad. Completely, completely worn out. And you can see that there. That's how bad that is there. Like there's a piece of metal even just completely destroyed. So, managed, managed to get a couple of new ones. And um, two new ones to replace it. I'm also going to try and jack these in as the spread. And I have a little bit of welding to do here to build the, build this up as well. Um, I have uh, the track adjuster I have to do a bit of work on on this one. I'm going to replace these bolts here and I'm going to put some Loctite on them and tighten them back up, get them get it all cleaned up. I had a slightly bigger issue on the other one because it was already broke off. So I'll show you that now in a minute. And uh, yeah, that's it. So what happened what usually is, is if somebody has done a wee bit of welding on this and what happens to them is, is when you weld them, you create a lot of heat here, goes in through the pin and it burns out all your seals and uh, once your seals go, we, the rest is history because it just uh, allows all the dirt in and whatever bearings or whatever's in the centre of these here, I don't actually know what's in the centre of them, uh, get exposed to all the material that's coming up around your tracks like this here all the time and then it's all over. So anyway, so um, I have a lot of repairs here, and that's a bit of metal that's been damaged here, I'm going to pull that back, weld that all up. I have some flat bar I've also got to weld here, I'm going to put new uh, track uh, track guides here, and I also have track guides to weld on for the centre. I'm going to put them in the very centre roller on each side, I have one of these for each side, so I bought these as well. So these, these little plates here, just have to get them centred. Over that, over that centre roller, and it's going to help keep the chains, protect the chains from uh, spreading over and back. Especially walking around rock and stuff. Hopefully, they'll kind of keep the rocks away from getting caught up in around everything on each end, and just causing a lot of harm we don't want. So, yeah, I'll, I'll show you now what I'm talking about now, as uh, in terms of uh, the other track adjuster that I'm working on here now. So this is the the other track adjuster we just spoke about. So this is the collar that I showed you on the last one that I'm going to replace the bolts on, but unfortunately in this case, it's broke off. So we pulled the bushing out of that earlier on. There's, there's a bush in that like so, that sits in here, and it, it, it goes across this here and helps this keep this, this guided here, this piston guided. In, in, internally in this here, I have three broken bolts. One should be a lot easier than the other two, these will have to be drilled out. If it all comes to all, I might end up putting three new positions. Whatever it takes to get that back on, because obviously that's needed. So without that, this here sits on this bush, and that bush is sitting in this cylinder here, in, internally in this here. And it keeps it guided as straight as possible. So now, some may look at these and not say that's, that's ruined, you know, there's nothing left of that. Fair enough. Yes, it's, it's damaged, and if it had to go back in completely, let's say if you had a situation where you're brand new chains, well then obviously it's not good. But in my case, the ceiling point of this is still fine, this part here, well, as far as I can see. So where the, where the seals will sit, well the seals are mainly in here in this centerpiece, but this section here where this is sitting, it's only a guide. By the time the chains are worn, if these are still in good order, which they're actually in great order, this I think these were replaced by previous, uh, when maybe the chains were replaced in the machine. If they're if they're, that's still in good shape, well then it'll be a matter of just replacing these, put new ones of these on, just to suit that there's new chains on again, uh, etc. But look, at, we don't know where we are with that road. So this this section here, this is the piece that uh, goes on to push uh, to push your uh, idler fork down. He goes on there, so he, we would press him off. So that's really it. That's all the parts I'm looking at. New seal kit to put seals on this, uh, to put the bush and, and the uh, little scraper on the end of this. 
and uh, I'm just going to get into that now. I'm going to put all these parts onto this, get this all look nice and clean. This, I kind of give it a bit of clean. You see some blue roll in there at the minute. That's just greasing behind that blue roll. I put that in so I could clean here and not be worried about the dirt getting into the grease and etc. Put that in the parts wash. So that's that all washed up now. You can see a little bit of rust around it, I think. It looks like rust. Um, yeah, it's a little bit of rust. Nothing to worry about because that's the bush. Um, and this here's the seals. This it's this side in is the most important. Um, we obviously don't want really any moisture in this end, but the rust won't do any harm. It's not going to matter. It's only the bush that's going to be guiding it on this point. So I'm just going to get a little bit of sandpaper and just kind of level out these wee bits of rust, just so that it's kind of as smooth, has a bit more of a smooth run in and out. Mainly just pitted, so yeah, I'm not really worried about it too much. Probably going to hit this this section here with the grinder just to kind of tidy it up, and I'll leave it that. It's it's easier probably to press the end back on. We're more or less happy enough with that. So we put on a few seals now. A couple of O-rings here, I presume, maybe off of the other end. Oops, uh, so this cone. It's on top of that there. It's going to be obviously there. It's pretty self-explanatory. Don't know if something should be behind this though. front of it actually.
sand and wheel here and run this in here just to take out the rust out of here. Pull that out there. Yeah, it just needs a good cleaning. Now this little guy should be in there. And these should be in behind him. So just clean that off quickly with the grinder. Give that a quick rub. I'll probably give it another rub. So I want to try and see where this move. I'm not going to bet my life on it, but we'll just see what happens for the one that is there that I can get access to. So I'll try and get as much grip as possible on it. It's actually moving, so that's great. Just keep that moving. Walk it in and out slightly, have a little bit of WD-40 on it. <coughs> that's good. It's really, really good. So spin that off. And then I'll be able to kind of tell from this as well what thread is left on the other ones and what, uh, if I have any uh, depth left behind them. So I know from this here now that there's that much thread depth, but I want to find out, I want to gauge how much is left in there. So that's the depth of the hole. So that's great. So I actually have a gap behind those. So the great thing about a gap behind them is being able to get drilled right down to the, to the base and get away of taking it out even, or not even drilling to the base. I'll just try it as I go. I might uh, might drill it, uh, drill uh, drill slightly down into it and see if it can go. I might even I think I might have a left hand drill bit here and see what it does, but I'll not hold up hope for any of those things. Um, try get a center on them, and try and drill them. Um, that one might be even might be attemptable with with a nut. Might put a nut on it and, and weld it to it. Might be the best way out actually. So I'm going to use this little finisher here. Uh, it's close to a finisher anyway, I think. Yeah, mid to finish, so. Um. It's actually beginning to cut that. Don't want to cut it at all, but just wondering if I got the right thread. M8 by 1.25. Well, they're not an imperial, they're not imperial, so we'll go with that. I think I'm running in a couple of threads and try one of these new old bolts for it.
plan B. It's not enough on those. Get a little grip on them. I think also the heating bolts are tightening in there. So eventually by drilling, so it is an, it's an M8 hole, so by drilling it out 6.5 with a standard bit and then using the, the reverse drill to try and take out the rest, I got out the rest of the threads as you can see, actually looks like a heli coil, so it, I got it fairly central. So as soon as the left hand drill went in like that there in the opposite direction, it screwed them a couple of bits out, which leaves for a lot of, makes the job a lot easier. So I'm going to work on that and get the next one out the same way. And uh, yeah, hopefully we're good to go then. So small bit of success now. So all holes are all re-threaded. Um, all bolts are in and out now. Um, got the rest of that last one out. Took a little while to get it out. Um, so I like so this will bolt back on here. Three bolts in it, etc. with all the seals in it. And we should be good to go. So I'm just gonna do a bit of cleaning on that. I'll show you, so I'll do a quick video of repacking this here. When I have it cleaned, obviously, and uh, when I do a bit of cleaning, that all back together, piston back into it, and or rod, uh, and uh, we're good to put it back on. So that has uh, the best clean I could kind of give that. It's as clean as it's going to be. Um, I used a bit of sandpaper, cleaned it down, kept cleaning it out. Um, a little bit of wear on the inside of that. It's a little bit, it's a little bit rough, but uh, yeah, I think it's going to have to do. Um, actually had an idea there I might actually run this little honing tool on it actually it might help rip off some of that rougher edge but anyway I'm gonna just say I'm gonna pack this here now we'll put the 
try to get this portion to this. Seems to be sitting in okay. Hopefully, it goes down through this now. Hmm. I got it as clean as it could, but maybe it's not clean enough yet. It's probably not gonna be that easy to get it over that anyway, especially how rough it is, but we'll walk something anyway, even if I have to tidy that up with the grinder. Um, it might be just that there's a bit of dirt in the edge of that. I'll worry about that later. Get this little gay in here. Fairly straightforward. Him in, just get him nice and straight. So that's it. So that's that done. So get that. That's fit the back on. Um, just see what this does. Anything better than the way it is right now? So I think that's big enough. I have a larger one now, but let's see if we can run this one first. Just for maybe somebody who doesn't know, this is a cylinder holding tool for an engine. No, yeah, that's good. Just that little run. It's for uh, to take the edge off a bore when you're going to um, you're going to rebuild an engine. In this case, it's kind of not for this job, but we make it work. I always use a little bit of oil with it. Make it help clean off that bit of rough rust from that. Give it a nice even seat for the seal. The seal's never going to be perfect in it anyway, but we'll try to get it as good as we can. That's actually better now. You can actually see the, the metal right round, which is not perfect, it's kind of pitted, but there's no big holes or anything in it, it's just a wee bit rough. That's a lot better than it was. Actually worked well. It's a lot better. Nice and shiny now. We're not gonna get any better than that. So that's that. We'll uh I'm gonna try and get this uh this rod tied it off and get it onto this so that I can get it into that now. Mm. I actually have that seal on the wrong way around. I think. I can't walk like that. Don't know what made me put that on like that. In this case here, the, the grease can just slip past this, can't it? Actually, that there sits like that, right? I'm gonna have to actually take a look at this now and see what's going on here. Because I would have imagined. I think I put them in the wrong way around. I think I did. That should be the other way. Just wasn't even sure that's the way that came off, but maybe not. It won't ever hold the grease inside if it's around this way, I think. It's not possible. Stuck on the groove nicely now. <sighs> so this guy I think maybe has to go on first like this. So maybe that's what that flat edge is. Maybe there is, no. Maybe the O-ring does go in front of that. No. The 
that you know that there's too tight. Can't imagine that that sits in there. Because I'm trying to work out why on the old one there's this kind of like layer of something here. Maybe it's just dirt. I thought that was a rotten seal. Seems like a rotten seal. I'm gonna have to go look up the, the drawing for that. I think that's how that should be, but maybe there's supposed to be another O-ring in front of that. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look this all up. So as I said, I definitely uh, put these on the wrong way around first. So, of course this makes sense that the grease would behind, be behind this seal. So to push it out against, so in other words, to push that lip out against the walls of the cylinder to put pressure on it. But in certain circumstances in the past, I have seen them the other way, just to say it. Not that I was wrong, I was right, I was wrong. But these here, these here, once the grease comes up behind it, you can get the force. Uh, and in some cases, you can have these doubled and there can be both ways to stop um, oils of that transfer in the wrong way. So, in other words, that there should be on first, and then this here should be on here like this, with the, this open ridge here, so to allow it to push the piston out, rather than if it's this way, the grease can pass this. So I just kind of, as I was building it, I obviously just kind of looked at it, didn't really think about what way it was, just kind of in my head. So that there does go like this. So that's back in there now, that's the way that should be. Now we put the clip back on, it was just that covered in grease, I think I didn't even realise what I was doing. So we put the grease, we put this clip back on, and he's good to go now. So that's that, let's just try and help that stop sliding back, obviously. So it's not gonna go anywhere there now. So we have a wee bit of fun now just to get that in, fed, feed that in nice and gently into that, to make sure that it doesn't get caught or nipped when I'm putting it in. I'll put a bit of grease on it, obviously, if to tie this up, as I said, to get the, the collar on, I'll have to grease in the collar, put a wee bit of grease in the collar to help it down. But I'm just gonna give that a wee run of the grinder just, just to get that rough off that, to help it, help it feed in, because I feel it's a wee bit raised, and it's gonna ha be hard on the bush trying to get it across it. So I'll just give it a wee tidy in first. As you can see, I can't get it in as far now because it's airlocked. So the air's against me, so. Oh, well, it might be moving. No, oh, that's what I didn't want to happen. So we'll just have to put the collar on it. Let's see if I can release some pressure from the back.
that's it where it should be. Tighten them up and lock some lock tight now and that's it. Check on them again. As I say, they have to be very tight, so that seems to be okay. Obviously, I've been told that, that will go on to that without without having to go to too much trouble, but I can even leave it and let it go on itself. But I think I'll just give it a quick clean, hit it a few slaps of the hammer there so you can get it in a little bit. Might just help with the, the whole situation. Um, give, this a run. give it a quick run of this. It should be fairly good anyway, that thing. This might help knock out some dirt out of it. I'll put a little bit of grease on it, no harm. I've been told like these here will go in themselves once the pressure's against them, so I don't have to worry about pushing them on or pressing them on really. Yeah, it's made its way in the whole way, my guess. Yep, it's went the whole way, so that's it. Finished. On to the next one now. So this is the next one now, and as you can see, this was loose. But I'm just fearing now that I might have made the wrong call on this one. That I maybe should be possibly changing out the changing out more than the bolts because of the uh the plate that's in the piston but we'll see i don't know how easy these are going up or hard these are going to be to get out but it's not looking great we'll put a little bit of lease oil in around them maybe that'll make its way in so I've went the whole way and taken this all out completely. And um, of course, what I thought I didn't want to happen, of course, is that uh, I'm gonna have to actually take this one off as well and replace the, replace the bush in this one. As you can see, it's very bad. And I can see little parts of it coming up. You can see little bits of it actually sticking up around the edge of it there now. It's actually bits of it falling out everywhere. So it's worn out. So I'm gonna get another seal kit for this one and I'll rebuild this one as well when I'm at it because that's obviously the best. The best move that uh, leaves everything that it's um i know i have a bit of peace of mind with it then so however so i so i pressed off the top of this and as you can see there's the there's the worn out bush but i have a bigger problem with this i think i'm gonna have to get one of these collars because there's an actual lip edge to retain to retain it and as you can see there's no lip edge here and you can see the lip edge there it's to help retain that bush so I think probably one of the best moves here could be to buy a new one of these because it's been moving around for so long that these holes are also slightly elongated from the from moving around the bolts still worn. So there's a few different points of wear on that. It was also rubbing off the housing here. You can see actually there's a wee edge lip on that there. So I'm thinking that I'm just going to get one of these collars here to replace that one and then we'll put the whole lot back together the way it is. So at the next stage here now, so this is a little trick that I was told by on the carriage men who do this work the whole time. So as you can see, you have threaded bar to, and I made up these couple of brackets here to make sure that because it would just pull this, it would bend this in, it would bend these in. But this threaded bar is capable of pulling this in. And 
protruding this here. This one's already done. You can see the well. So, I'll show you that now. It's getting a little bit dark now, but I've uh, managed to get that one in fairly well and I've moved this clamp now to the lower side. So I got a good pull in on it, got nearly where I need to be, uh, kind of in and out, in and out, checking to see. I didn't obviously want to overdo it and giving it time to settle between the pulls. So I was pulling it, releasing it, I was pulling it sometimes and then pulling it, going away for a while and pulling it again. So uh, it's kind of a matter of you, you pull these cold, you don't use any heat. You uh, just just pull them cold, and uh, that's what I've been told is the most successful. You heat them, it actually it'll, uh, it'll spread again really easily. The only way to do them that they'll be successful is if it's done cold. Um, this here now is uh, I'm using this just as like a kind of lever device to pinch this lower side, because the lower side is um, is kind of staying out while the top side's coming in. Obviously, because the hole's a little bit higher to the top side, so. Um, if you had a little bit better setup, I'm sure you could uh, you could manage something. You could probably put a thread of bar on this side and one on the inside. But look at it, it, it works anyway. This one's pinching it, I see that's pulling in the lower side. So I'm going to leave this overnight now and it might settle a bit more overnight. I might give it another little jag, a little pull in again in the morning and then let it settle again. There's plenty of welding to do, as I said earlier on. You can see the gap the far side uh just needs to be built up now it's not it's not really really bad but and then i'm after in in the meantime while i was pulling that i've put these back together so with me uh hive the fox back on these back on the idlers so uh they're kind of ready nearly to slide in i have to go back and i've got my seal kit now to rebuild uh the other um track adjuster so i'm going to rebuild that and then um yeah well, well away then oh we've got new part the bushing of this one in comparison to this one as you can see from this one it's so badly worn put the bushing in it's loose don't want that at all so that's no good this one here we want to be able to kind of do it like so a little split pop it in and we just push the push the joint back out of it that's it. See, it, it's loose, yes, but it, it can't come out. The big problem is this lip is here, exists. So, I'll just put the seal in it. And the job's a good one. Put everything back in. Everything all welded up. Guides pulled in each side. As you can see, nice, nice even gap. This one's out a little bit further than this one, but the more or less where they should be. There should be 300 mil clearance in between these. And uh, yeah, I just pushed these in with the bar, they went straight in. Because I used, uh, while I was welding it, I was using this as my gauge, because that's the exact width of, the, of your um, of your gauge, what your gauge should be. So I used that, and once once I used that, then everything worked out perfect. So I just after lifting the track back up there, getting ready to repin it. Uh, I'm gonna use uh, probably a couple of straps and stuff, just to pull that up together, get the pin into it. Get it greased up, get it back in the action, and yeah, job's a good one there.